everyone, I'm Seva and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be making pita bread. But before we get into the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss another one of my videos. Alright, let's get started. So pita bread is a flatbed that is most common in Mediterranean and in Middle Eastern cuisines. Now you can make it with a pocket or without one. And you can do so much with pita bread. You can stuff it, you can make sandwiches, you can use your souvlaki, you can make a gyro, really whatever you want. You can even, I know I like to dip it in my hummus sometimes too. So all you're going to need is um, some warm water, you can use some yeast, shout out to my dad for sending me some yeast because we can have any over here. Some sugar, some kosher salt, some olive oil, and you're going to need three cups of flour, but you're just going to want to divide it up. You're going to have two cups in one bowl and then half a cup in the other two. So the first thing you're going to want to do is preheat your oven to 500 degrees and you're going to either put a cast iron pan or a pizza block, whatever it is that you have, and you're going to want to warm that up in the oven. So next what you're going to want to do is take a big bowl and you're going to take your warm water, your yeast, and your sugar, and you're just going to mix it up until it's dissolved and then I'll tell you what to do next. Okay, so now that everything has been dissolved, we're just going to take half a cup of our flour and we're going to mix that in and then you're going to leave this to sit for about 15 minutes until you start to see it foaming up. Okay, so now that our mixture has foamed, it's time to add our oil, our salt, and our two cups of flour. And we are reserving the other half of a cup for later. We're going to be sprinkling it out and kneading the dough. And if you find that it's still a little bit too sticky, you're going to want to add some more. But just don't add everything in all at once. Now, it's not completely necessary, but that's why I separate all of my flowers in different bowls. Because I do tend to just, I'll forget, and I'll just pour the entire thing in. And I'm like, oh no, I just poured three cups into this thing, and I only needed half of a cup. Our olive oil. Now we have our kosher salt. Now you're going to want to take a wooden spoon or a spatula like I'm using here. You're not going to want a, um, a whisk or something like that and you're just going to put your flour in and you're just going to start to stir this around. Now you're going to want to do this until you have like this stickyish or they call it a shaggy mass that starts to form. Now like I've said in my other videos this is going to be a topic for a totally different video but you don't want to be kneading or mixing around too much because the more you do that the more gluten is going to form so just do exactly as I'm going to put in the um, description down below and you should be fine. Okay so now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take some of the flour that we have reserved over here and you're going to want to dust a clean surface so this counter is already clean and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to knead the dough for about seven minutes so you're going to want to do this until the dough is just smooth and moist i'm going to set a timer because like i said you don't want to overdo anything you want the dough to stay soft and moist if it is too sticky just go ahead and add more of the reserved flour that we have on the side I didn't listen to my own rule. Ah, I'm putting my hair up. Okay. See, now mine is a little sticky, so you can see I just keep adding some more flour as I go. It's perfectly fine. Now, if you get tired, you can always let the dough sit for about 10 minutes and then continue. Now I am going to be making a chicken gyro recipe, so definitely keep an eye on that and you can make your own pita bread for your gyros. Okay, so now that we're finished kneading our dough, this is what you should look like here. It's a nice, soft, elastic, smooth dough. So what you're going to want to do is just place it in a large bowl that's completely clean. I use the same one as before, but I obviously cleaned it first. And then you're just gonna, gonna want to loosely cover it 
with some plastic wrap. And after I clean this bowl, I let it just sit for a little bit in, um, in some hot water. So it just heated up the bowl just a little bit. So we're gonna do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to dampen with some warm, warm, warm water a little rag and we're gonna put that over top. This is just going to help the dough from drying out so we don't have to use an oil or another thing inside the bowl. We're just gonna want to wrap this over top. And then you're just going to let this sit and rise for about an hour until it doubles in size. Okay, so it's been an hour. So we're going to check up on our dough. Well, look how big it got. How crazy is that? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take off our plastic wrap. Ooh, look how stringy. Now we're going to again lightly dust a clean flat surface. Okay, we're going to punch out our dough. So we're just going to punch out our dough. We're going to cut it into eight even pieces and then we're just going to cover those up with the plastic wrap and let those sit for about 10 minutes. Now I'm just using a butter knife and just keep cutting them in half so that they're as even as possible. And then you'll be left with two balls and then you're just gonna cut those all in half and then you'll have your four, your eight, okay? So I'm just going to take a paper plate or whatever it is you have and take all eight of the balls and put them on there and cover it with some plastic wrap and just let those sit for, like I said, about 10 minutes. Now, if you see one of your balls is drastically bigger than the other one, just take them out and put it on another one. Okay, so now it's been 10 minutes and we have our eight little balls of dough that definitely grew since 10 minutes ago. Okay, so then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take each one of the balls and you're gonna press it out, roll it out, whatever you'd like, to a quarter inch thickness and about eight inches in diameter. Now, I'm using just a cutting board over here as my flat surface and I still have my leftover flour from before. I'm just gonna take one of them. Now, your cast iron pair or your pizza pair, pan or your pizza pan, whatever it is that you have, should already be preheated and hot in the oven at 500 degrees. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to fit as many pita breads as we can onto the one skillet. And you're gonna to wanna to cook that for a couple minutes until it browns and until you see that pocket start to form. Now if you do it too much and you end up getting a hole or something, just fold it over and do it again. Okay, so now we're ready to put these in the oven. So you wanna do this as quickly as you can so you don't let all of the air escape. So we're just going to open up the oven, on our rack, and put as many on the pan as we can fit. Everyone's pan is gonna be a different size. And then, like I said, you're going to want to just let this sit for a few minutes until the, the pita bread bubbles in the middle and it gets a little bit brown. This is my attempt at making heart pita. All you're going to want to do is cover your pita with a towel until you're ready to eat them. Okay, you guys, so all of our pita bread is out of the oven. Now, I'm going to make sure I don't pick a piece that's too, too hot, but it's time to try it. It's so, so good, you guys. It's the best pita bread I've ever made. It's super, super soft, but nice and thin and light. It's delicious. Well, that's all I have for this video today, guys. I hope you liked it, and I hope you learned something new. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know if you tried it, what you thought. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss another one of my videos. If you want to get my exclusive nutrition tips, delicious recipes just like this one, and healthy food recommendations, then make sure to go down to the description box, click the link, and join the fam. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.